whenever the laws of any state are broken, the duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. the community from violence, rigid controls are exerted over the possession and use of firearms. A further indirect control requires that all doctors report immediately to law enforcement officials the treatment of any gunshot wound. In this case, however, two hold-up men, one with a bullet in his shoulder which demanded medical attention, took desperate measures to avoid contact with the police. From a local telephone directory, they chose a doctor who had offices in his home located in an outlying suburban area. You Dr. Elliot? That's right. I've got to talk to you, doctor. It's an emergency. Well, come in. Well, what's the trouble? My father's met with an accident. He's got a bullet in him. We want you to take it out. A bullet? Well, where is he? We'll have to make a report and I'll have to call a hospital. None of that stuff, Doc. Is this your bag? Yes. Put everything you need in there. And hurry it up, you're coming with us. You're aware, of course, that this is kidnapping. Yeah. Let's not make it murder. Come on, start packing. You drive, Doc. country where we'll be alone. You take Highway 103 and observe the traffic signs here, Doc. All of them. I don't even have to see that hole in your shoulder. I can tell from your eyes. You ought to go to a hospital. Oh, sure. And from there to the pen, huh? Don't underrate Jackie, Doc. It happened 24 hours ago. He's carried that slug for a thousand miles. Yeah, all the more reason he ought to go to a hospital. He needs decent care. That's why you're here. And don't you forget it. There's a back road into the woods coming up, Doc. Turn off. This looks like the spot. Get out. You expect me to perform surgery here in this wilderness? Listen, you stop griping. It's okay with me, it's okay with you, understand? Where to, Monty? Over there. Come on. Started, Doc. The sooner you patch him up, the sooner we'll be out of here. What about me? We got nothing against you. We leave you here. Are we once a head start? By the time you walk out of here, we'll be well on our way. 
Look, for the last time, this man needs the facilities of a... Doc! We're in bad to the law. Real bad. You're gonna take that slug out of me here and now. If you don't. The shoulder of mine's just a sample of what you get. I'm a doctor. I'll do the best I can, but under these circumstances, I can't promise a thing. Okay, but no tricks with those gadgets of yours. at a time now. What did you say your name was? Tommy Evans. Okay, Tommy, where are you calling from? I see. Now, tell me, what was it you saw? Two men with guns, and they had a doctor, and one of them was wounded in the shoulder. They were going to make the doctor take the slug out. What did all this happen, Tommy? I see. You're sure one of them was wounded? Now, hold on the phone, Tommy. Don't hang up, please. I got a youngster on the phone, says he saw two men holding a doctor at gunpoint in the woods off Highway 103. A doctor? Yeah, if that's true. He says one of them was wounded. If this is true, it could tie in with this APB and that big hole up in Jacksonburg yesterday. What's the kid's name? Tommy Evans. Sounds to be nine or ten years old. Hello, Tommy. This is Dan Matthews. Yeah, Dan Matthews. What's that? Yes, I'm with the Highway Patrol. What kind of a car do these men have? Oh, you didn't, huh? Tell me, Tommy, did you see a brown and white station wagon out your way today? No? Okay. Tell me, is anybody home, your mother or anybody else? No, sir. My mother's gone shopping. She left me a note. I'm all alone. Gone shopping? Where do you live, Tommy? How many miles past Valley View? Well, then approximately how many? Now, wait a minute, Tommy. Farther than Jason Road, but not as far as Pine Canyon Bridge. If I'm right, that's about a five-mile stretch. Tommy. You're sure these men had real guns, huh? All right, Tommy, here's what I want you to do. I want you to help us find those men. Go down to the mailbox and wait for us. We'll be there as soon as we can. Now, have you got that? Okay, Tommy, let's go. Alert Tommy Evans, having called the highway patrol, waited at the mailbox. But a second seems like an hour to a 10-year-old and his highly charged imagination saw the criminals getting away. He had to stop them. Come on, let's make some time. That's pretty rugged country, strange place for an operation. It could prove fatal, too, for the doctor. Ought to be right along here somewhere. Hold it. Tommy! Tommy Evans! Tommy! It's only been 30 minutes since he called us, but I'll bet it seemed like two hours to that kid waiting here alone. Yeah. Take a look at this. Dear Dan Matthews, I worried these men would get away. I went back to spy on them. Please follow me. Go to the highway sign. Tommy. What highway sign? There's one up there. I suppose that's the one he means. All right, let's try it. Stop. 
Start in here. Go to the big tree with dead limb. Tommy. Ever been on a treasure hunt? Been a long time. You're about to get a refresher course. Well, there's nothing more I can do. The bone wasn't crushed, as far as I can tell, but that crushed tissue was a perfect breeding ground for infection. You're going to be fine, Jackie. You just take it easy, boy. How you feel? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be okay. Sure you will. We got plenty of time. You just take it easy. If it starts getting real tough again, see to it that the doc gives you something to slack it off. It must be half mountain goat. At least. But I guess it's the crazy kind of a trail you pick if you're ten years old. If I was ten years old, I wouldn't care. Well, we found a no trespassing sign in Cannonball Rock. This must be double slide. So you don't think this whole thing's a wild goose chase, do you? If it is, I know a little wild goose is going to lose some feathers. Let's go. What's that? It's a kid. Get him. Hold him here. and Sergeant Morse followed Tommy's difficult trail, knowing that if his story was true, time was running out. Maybe we took a wrong turn back there. Look. We didn't make the wrong turn. Sure looks like Tommy did. Sure does. That footprint's a good size 10. Yeah. We better get to that kid and fast. Here he is. A little party crasher. Hello, son. What's your name, kid? Timmy Evans. What are you doing sneaking around up here? I wasn't. You ever think you might get in trouble sticking your nose in other people's business? Yeah. Don't mind him, kid. He's not feeling too good. You see, he had an accident. And the doc here had to patch him up. That's right, Tommy. Don't be afraid. We know they're in here someplace. I hope they stay long enough for us to find them. The will of Tommy don't give them any information. Our only chance is to separate and bottle them up. We know they had to use this road to come in off the highway. Tell you what we'll do. I'll go on through the woods. You go back to the house, pick up the car, then you come in this road. You got about a rough half mile to the house and about three miles to the road. How long it'll take you? Give me 20 minutes. You got to make time. I'll make time. Okay. Well, I bet you're wondering why I was chasing you then, huh? And why we got the guns and all? Should I tell him? Sure, you tell him, Marty. I'd like to hear it myself. Well, you see, it's this way, kid. You know what uranium is. Yes. Well, you know how valuable it is, then. We're uranium prospectors. And that's why we're being so careful. Yeah. Somebody found out about a uranium, well, they try to steal it. You believe that? I... I guess so. That's right, Tommy. That's what we are, uranium prospectors. You too? But I thought that... You thought what? Nothing. Good. Let's keep it that way. You see, this is a, a big, big secret. And you're the only one that knows we're up here. You won't tell anybody, Tommy. If we let you go, you won't tell anybody. Shut up, Doc. Maybe we shouldn't have told him. Maybe we should... <coughs> Take it easy, Jam. I'm okay. What's the matter? Didn't you get the slug out? Of course I did. It's just... Slug? Who said anything about a slug? Nobody mentioned anything about a bullet while you were here. Now, how did you find out? Hold it, Monty. You were here when we got here. You heard me and Doc arguing about a bullet and you ran away, didn't you? No. You did, otherwise you'd know that Doc did get that slug out. Who'd you tell? Nobody. I didn't tell anybody. You were gone a long time. You ran home and told your mother, didn't you? No. Don't lie to me, Sonny. I... I went home. I was gonna tell my mother, but she was out shopping. 
So I came back here. Look, that proves it. If he'd told his mother or anybody else, do you think they'd let him come back here? Doc's got a point there, Jack. Maybe. Even if the kid is telling the truth, I think we'd better get out of here. Well, you think you can make it? I'll be okay. Okay, here. Yeah. Come on, have now. What about them? I don't know. Maybe we ought to take them with us. Dump them off a little further from home. All right, we're clearing out. And you two are coming with us. Kid, you get the blanket and go with the dock. Come on, come on. Tommy's story was true, Dan Matthews now faced a greater problem. Two desperate criminals with two hostages. Shooting would lead to serious danger to the hostages. It now became necessary to encircle the men and try a bold bluff, hoping that little Tommy would understand. You drive, Doc. Kid, you get in the back with Jack. Tommy! Tommy! All right, out of sight, all of you. Harmless. I'll handle him. Don't you make a sound. Oh, hello, how are you? I'm looking for my nephew, Tommy Evans. He's playing around these hills someplace. A young cowboy, about eight or nine. Did you happen to run across him? Uh, who'd you say you were? I'm his Uncle Dan. You see, his mother and I were shopping. When we got back, he was gone. She got worried about him, so I said I'd come out and try and find him. Boy, I don't know how these kids do it galloping around these hills all day. Once is too much for me. Did you happen to see him? Yeah, yeah, we saw him. As a matter of fact, he's playing over here with my partner. He's quite a boy. Great imagination. Yeah. Uh, Jack, the kid's uncle's here. I'll get going. Beat it. It's too bad, kid. You have to take a walk with your uncle. He wanted to hitch a ride with us down to the highway. Oh, no, he tried that once before and the highway patrol brought him home. You been making a fest of yourself again? No, sir. Say, the highway patrol come up here often? No, not too often. We better get home. Your mother's worried about you. Thanks very much. It's okay. Keep walking, Tommy. Don't look back. We'll be all right when we get behind these trees. We're okay now. They were gonna take me with them. That figures. I didn't know if you would come or not. I didn't know if you could follow my trail. You didn't make it any too easy. Tommy, you've done a real good job. Glad you called us. Those men are wanted for a big holdup. A holdup? Yeah. What do they figure on doing with the doctor? I don't know. I think take him along with them. They're getting away! You're not gonna let them get away, are you? Don't worry, Tommy, they won't get away. There's a patrol car on this road from the highway right now. Gee! Look, I want you to go straight home. Oh, no! I want to see them get captured. When they spot the highway patrol car, they're gonna come back. I don't want you around here then. Please? Tommy, you've done a real good job. Let us take it from here, will you? I'll go straight home. Straight home. Go on now, get!
you doing, boy? Making it okay? Yeah. It hurts, but not like before. You okay, Doc? Thanks. Where do I send the bill? <laughs> That's real funny. A little jumpy about letting that kid go, though. Oh, he was harmless. His story about his mother out shopping, check with what his uncle said. Doesn't matter anyway. We'll be long gone before they can do anything. I guess you're right. Hey, look at that car down there. It's a patrol car. Stop and turn around right here, Doc. Just coincidence, but we won't tangle with him. We'll go out the other way. Don't get the idea you've got help coming to try anything funny, Doc. I'd drop you just to get you out of the way. Don't worry about me. I'm too smart to be a hero. Come on, step on it, Doc. You see him, Jack? No. He was a long ways away. Maybe he didn't spot us. How did that get there? Hold it. Throw down your guns. You're under arrest. We haven't got that much time. We've got to get him out of there. You stay here and keep him busy. I'll circle wide the other side and come up on him. That way we'll get him in between us, and he'll have to pull out or else we'll get him. Get going. Said, drop it. We got him! We got him! Get out of here, kid. Put your hands on top of your head. Start moving for the car. Tell your partner it's all over. Don't shoot, Jack. He's got me. Jack, don't shoot. That's good advice, mister. Drop it right there. Turn around. Put your hand on your head. All clear. I left the car down the road a ways. I'll get these two out of here. Sorry, I wasn't much help. I, I guess I was scared. You did exactly the right thing, Doctor. You kept out of the way. Which is more than I can say for some people. Are you mad at me? Oh, no, but it should be. I'm glad because, well, I wish I could have a job like yours someday. Tell you what, you come and see me in about 15 years. Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week.